Ponypool, once known as one of Wales' first industrious communities, now it hosts a community all of its own. We asked the market traders what they thought. My name is Shane Kennedy. I'm Pontypool Indoor Market and High Street Manager. I look after the indoor market and all the events in the town centre. They include things like the artisan markets that we do, the Christmas cavalcades, Halloween and Easter events, street food festival. The reason why I chose this job was because I seen such a beautiful historic building in the centre of Pontypool and I seen it as such a, an amazing venue and I really wanted to champion it and I seen so much potential in the space that um, I just couldn't keep myself away from it. Artisan Markets are a market that we run in association with Corvine and Gwent Small Business. It happens once a month collection of local crafters, makers. Each one of our artisan markets is themed, so this month will be uh, the Pride themed. And the one after that will hopefully be a nice summer festival. So the people in Pontypool Indoor Market and Pontypool Town in general are like a really big family, you know, everyone really helps out the minute. We've got a lot of people out there putting up bunting for this weekend's event. Give me a smile. <laughs> it's like a real big family we've got here full of happy people. Warren's, established in 1977, is still run today by the original owners, Kay and her husband. Ellen was kind enough to tell the tale of these local legends. They they bought paint down from London. Obviously, they're originally from Ireland, and they come down and just started it, S selling all this really exactly what we sell now. What we doing now is what they done. <laughs> so we we're doing something right in it. Yeah. So it's a simple place, it's a good business, and then um, and then COVID hit, unfortunately. Got a bit patient then. And so lots and lots of people finished. It's, it's quite sad. I lived abroad and I relied on tips, I'd be useless, I'd starve. <laughs> See, there's me with the answers, worried about the answers, and I he hasn't know. got the questions. <laughs> Answering our burning questions, Ali from Tea Lighted. We've been here about six years. Uh, we live in Ponty Pool anyway. I gave up work through ill health, had cancer and that, so I found that I couldn't do the job I was doing. I was a graphic designer, as you can see on there, that's what I normally do. And this, this was a hobby, yeah. and it got a bit out of hand. <laughs> there was a bit too many. I, do people, I don't do people's portraits because it gets quite personal. Oh. Times like, but I do dogs, <laughs> so yeah. you can get away with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I enjoy what I do, yes. Yeah. I must do, I take it home and do it on an evening as well, so I, must, I have to love it. <laughs> But well, it's down with the economy, isn't it? People haven't got the money to spend. Yeah. So where before they were treating themselves, now it's special occasions like anniversaries, birthdays, that sort of thing. We tend to do a lot of. Whereas people just come around and say, well, I like that, I'll buy it. And we're ticking by, ticking over. 
that's all you can do is keep going. Across the market, not your typical hooker, Tanya at the craft cabin. Crochet hooks, get it? I'm Tanya, the owner of the craft cabin. I bought the business in November 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. I opened for three weeks and closed for four months before I could reopen, but things are going well. It was a roller shop with all the haberdashery you can see around. I've got embroidery kit, felting, I do zips and buttons and ribbons and all the things you need for knitting and crochet. That is the thing, I was really unhappy in my old job. I always wanted to own a wool shop, never thought it would happen. Saw this up for sale on Facebook of all things, looked at the shop and thought, yeah, I want to do this. So I just went back and quit my job. Nobody could believe I was doing it. <laughs> crochet I taught myself. I've only been crocheting about six, seven years, something like that. I like helping people. So I like the craft and chat thing because we all got different things to bring to the table, different abilities. We can all teach each other, spread our knowledge, which I think is amazing. The craft and chat um, arose because I thought about getting a, a crafting community together and very often there was only two of us which was fine and then suddenly I was gonna stop it for the win for the summer because I thought well nobody will want to come for the summer because it's been going to be out and about and it just exploded in the summer months so on a Thursday it's between five and seven and on a Saturday it's all day between ten and three so we have had like 11 people in here on a Saturday, but then I can't get customers in here. So the market manager has kindly allowed them to have a stall in the market then on a Saturday for free in return for decorating the market. We've, yeah, we've tried to do community things as a group as well. Thank you, Becca. I wouldn't give it up and I certainly wouldn't go back to my old job. I'm not saying I think it's because I'm a woman of a certain age, but it was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> This group loves to prove that this centuries-old hobby still holds its flair. Or just that they can natter for whales. <laughs> I don't do no. Go on. It's alright, David, they're filming me, are you? <laughs> Baby. <laughs> it's a good group, it's nice, you know, just to get together with friends. It's good for my mental health because otherwise I tend not to go out. And if I don't turn up there, they come around to see what's, what's up. Nice, you know, just to get together with friends, have a good chat and maybe even do some crafting. I was, I was fairly new to the area or I'd grown up here. Um, I'd lived in Northampton for 26 years, so I'd come back and I'd started crocheting and my mum said, oh, there's a craft and chat session. <laughs> Once I picked up crochet, I uh, found, uh, found out that this place does this on Thursdays. Uh, I could just come crochet, learn new things, teach my mum crochet. I think I'm more dragging my mum along. I came along, it's given me a whole new range of friends, which can be exhausting. <laughs> I've always got socks on the go, which is what I'm working on tonight. But at home, I'm doing a baby blanket for a customer of Tanya's. Yeah, it keeps me busy, stops me eating sometimes. Makes me feel good just like chatting to people, just you know, working on my crochet. I mean, I'll have my mom's scarf ready for maybe next winter. But my crocheting project is an elephant, so I've just started making an ear. Thank and then you. you have to make two of them. I can imagine so. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously, you know, one eared elephants. <laughs> one eared elephant. <laughs> a bit weird. <laughs> if I'd known, I'd have brought a pre prepared one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would rather buy in person because you can see colour, you can have a, you know, a squish and a sniff because I always sniff one. 
Oh, we do. It's just, yeah, you've got to have a stand. You get to see, like, the actual wool that's supporting a business like Tanya's. Oh, no, I hit the mic. <laughs> ah. Shane hopes that the market and its community will continue to thrive. The main issue for us would be generally just getting the support of the local population. So the more people that we can get to come and support our events, the bigger and better each event will going to be. So local support is key really for these events being a success.